Yes, well, I was concerned, Paul, when I heard the media report earlier on this morning, and uh, I sought clarification from the president of the association, and he's provided that clarification, as I understand it, uh, and has indicated that he didn't uh, he have any information that would indicate that there was anything wrong in that context. So I'm relieved to hear that, because I know for a certain fact that there are Certainly, it is the case when uh, burglaries are reported, there's nothing taken, that they are actually recorded as burglaries. I've seen many, many instances of that. I've also seen many, many instances where, for instance, something happens, a serious matter, perhaps a shooting at a house, uh, maybe someone injured, maybe not. Uh, all of these things are investigated fully. People have been arrested before the courts. So I know for a fact that that is the position. And again, just to reassure people that in cases where people are reporting crime, they can rest assured they are recorded and investigated. Are you saying that crimes aren't categorised um, to, make it to make it not look as bad as it possibly is? Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that all crimes reported, Paul, are recorded. The categorisation of offences is a matter for the Garda who is taking the report, or indeed independently when our people in Castle Bar take the reports from members. So there's an independent view of what the categorisation should be, but I am satisfied that all crimes reported are recorded and indeed investigated. And what about the claims here at the conference that guidelines uh, were handed down from Garda headquarters uh, that particular crimes should be put in particular categories and that they shouldn't be recorded? For example, in relation to if what was said was if a victim doesn't make a statement, then uh, the crime should not be recorded. Well, that's simply not true. I mean, uh, I've already indicated that if a crime is reported, we are obliged, and I would expect people to act on that report and try to investigate it to his or her, or her uh, best of ability. And, and that is the position that will always remain the position. Well, what about the claims in relation to, for example, checkpoints where it's an, there, there could be an announcement that's an increased car, the presence, more checkpoints. Uh, what the GRA are saying is, yes, there may be more checkpoints, but they're only here for half the time. Uh, they're saying that cautions are now being registered on the Pulse system. Only this week a direction was given for that, they say, uh, so that the figures look good. Well, of course, I welcome any checkpoint that's been done because I am one of the chief uh, proponents in, in, in trying to encourage our members to get out there on the street and be visible. And checkpoints are a very, very good way of detecting crime and offences and indeed gathering intelligence and information, and that will continue. So that doesn't bother me. The more, the more checkpoints that take place, the better as far as I am concerned. But for half the time? Well, I mean, the, the duration of a checkpoint is a matter for the people who are operating the checkpoint. You know, I can go back to the 70s and the 80s where we had roving checkpoints where we'd do maybe 30 minutes in one location and move on. I'm thinking particularly after the bombings in 74 when we'd roaming checkpoints, very, very effective and, and detected many, many offences in their day. So you're satisfied with the clarification as far as you're concerned the matter is closed? As far as I'm concerned, I spoke to the President on the way in. I'm satisfied that he doesn't have any information or evidence which is what I was worried about, that there might be something out there, but I know for a fact that there isn't, and I am satisfied that is the, the position now, and we'll move on from there. What about the Garda fleet, the criticisms of the Garda fleet at the conference? I mean, they're quite worrying. Well, I mean, I think I've already indicated in previous occasions that uh, the Garda fleet is something that I work with. It's a continuous work in progress, and it is the case that uh, last year I received funding, and again the year before, and uh, hopefully... This year I've, I've got some additional funding and I hope to, to secure even further funding. Uh, but, you know, we have 133 vehicles ordered. We had 171 last year. So it is a work in progress. These are difficult times and, you know, I'm very, very conscious and it is my responsibility as Commissioner to ensure that we keep as fit for purpose uh, a fleet and indeed any other equipment that's necessary to do the job of policing and, and providing security for the citizens of this state. And that's what I will continue to do. Well, what, about, what about the type, of, the type of vehicles, though? That's the worry. The, they talk specifically about 80 of these new combo-type vans with no seat belts and no airbags in the back for prisoners. Well, I, I've seen them, and I, they have gone out to tender, and they meet all the specifications. And, you know, the simple fact of the matter is we do need vehicles. Uh, I don't see a situation where we should be charging up and down the country, you know, putting people in harm's way, and including our members. So, I mean, if you're talking about a criticism in relation to very high-powered cars and chasing these Audi gangs, etc., I don't see that as the methodology or the strategy employed to catch these people. There are other ways and means of doing that and we have a lot of active operations as we speak in place. And I'm quite confident that we will resolve these matters in the very near future without 
chasing up and down the country and putting our own members at risk and indeed members of the public. So are you saying you can't pursue these crime gangs and you won't pursue these high-powered crime gangs uh, because you don't have the vehicles to do it or because it's a change in policy? No, I'm not saying that. Clearly I'm not saying that. We will pursue these gangs to the ends of the earth, which is our job. But I'm not saying that it's necessary to travel at very high speeds behind these people in order to do so. That's all I'm saying. But it is necessary to have these high-powered vehicles so that you can match them. And, it, and what the criticism is is that you don't have them. Well, we do have a number of very high-powered vehicles at our disposal, you know, uh, and that is a simple fact. Commissioner, how would you describe the relationship between rank and file Gardaí and Garda management, I suppose, given the, the comments made this morning about the massaging of crime figures, and in general, a lot of them in there are quite angry about paying conditions? Uh, of course, and I've said it many, many times before, people are angry, people are hurt, people are sick to their teeth uh, as, what has, as to what has happened, particularly in their own financial circumstances. And of course, I as Commissioner am very, very conscious of that. As you know, I've met all of the associations uh, in the last number of weeks, and I've listened to some horrific stories. And I've listened very, very carefully to what they had to say to me, and I've passed on that information to the people that, that need to know about these things. So it's, it's not that we don't care, it's not that there is a disconnect. We, we are working very, very hard to provide a system of policing in this country to, to ensure the safety of its citizens, and we will work together. You know, people say things, and that's fine, but the bottom line is we are a united police force, and all of my members are working very, very hard towards securing the citizens of this country's security. If you look at what has happened just yesterday, you will see that there was considerable seizure of arms. This morning, you will see a considerable amount of cannabis in grow houses. And indeed, if you look across, and it's well documented in the media, the amount of grow houses that have been seized, that's all because my members are out there working very, very hard and tirelessly on behalf of the community. And that will continue to be the case under the guidance and direction of senior management. The, 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 comments, by John Parker, though, must, the, the comments by John Parker must show a sense of desperation, though, if Gardaí are having to go to those levels to express um, how tight they feel um, budgets are. Well, of course budgets are tight. We all accept that. And I must work within the confines of the monies that are provided for me. Uh, and, you know, that is a challenge. I, I don't pretend to hide from that. I never have done. But my job is to provide, my top priority is to provide uh, a police and security service for this country, and that's what I intend to do within the, the, the funds that are available to me. The Association has voted for uh, a motion uh, for an independent commission on pay and conditions. Do you support that? Well, I think there's a very real opportunity uh, now, Paul, to have a, a very close look uh, at, at Garda pay, certainly. And, uh, you know, it has been the case over many, many years that... Uh, allowances have been introduced as part of the Garda pay at a time when successive governments couldn't uh, provide an increase in pay. And I think that's, that's a given and that's, that's accepted and understood by everybody. So there is a very real opportunity, I think, here for uh, somebody to look at, at what is happening in the pay area of Garda Shikona. We've had in the past, as you know, the, the Conroy Commission and we've had uh, Ryan reports, etc. And all of those things have provided a certain outcome. I don't know what that outcome might be if the government were so minded to introduce it, but I would certainly be in favour. If, if, that, if the government were minded to do that, I would certainly be in favour of that happening. So will you take that to the Minister? Well, I'm sure the Minister will make his, his, his own mind up in relation to this. You see, we, we have to be careful here. My role and responsibility is to ensure that I keep the Garda Shikona as effective and efficient as it can be within the resources that are at my disposal. But the Minister is aware, Paul, the Minister is very much aware, and I have told my colleagues, and I will tell them again when I go in uh, to conference, that all of the issues they have brought to my table uh, are, are provided uh, by me to the people that need to hear these things, and people are listening. Political Except interference, they say there was, there's political interference in the Garda Shikona. Well, of course, if you look at the 2005 Garda Shikon Act, you will see that there's a very clear statutory myth. I have a, a clear role and responsibility as Commissioner of Garda Shikon. The Minister has a very clear role and responsibility in the context of what his remit is. Uh, and I have to say, since my appointment, the Minister has never crossed that Rubicon and tried to interfere with what I do. 
and I certainly have no intention now or any time in the future of crossing into the, the political arena uh, and, and try to influence that process. It's, it's not the role, it's not the responsibility of the Office of Commissioner.